Dashboards are one of the best ways to turn raw data into something people can instantly understand. But what if your dashboard could react to you, like showing different regions, targets, or projections at a single click? That's what we'll build today. A simple interactive dashboard using slicers, form controls, and a tiny bit of automation. By the end, you'll have a report that updates live. No formulas to adjust, no filters to reset. Let's start with the basics. Here I have a simple table of monthly sales by region and product. I'll insert a pivot table to summarize everything. So I go to insert, click on pivot table and confirm the data selection. In the new sheet, I put region and product in rows and revenue as values. Then I switch to insert, click on pivot chart and choose a clustered column chart. This gives me a quick visual overview of sales performance across all regions. To make it easier to read, I'll increase its size, remove the legend and grid lines, and rename both the chart and the sheet to revenue. The clear naming will be important later. Now, to make the dashboard more complete, I'll create another pivot table in another sheet. So I go back to the sales data sheet, go to insert, click on pivot table, and confirm the data selection. In the new sheet, I again put region, and product in rows, but units sold as the value field. Then I go to insert again, click on pivot chart, and choose a clustered column chart. Just as before, I'll increase its size, remove the legend and grid lines, and rename both the chart and the sheet to unit sold. This way, we'll have two views, one showing total revenue and one showing quantity sold. That is perfect for spotting differences between sales volume and value. Right now, the dashboard is static. It always shows everything. To make it interactive, I'll add slicers. With the revenue pivot table selected, I go to insert, click on slicer, pick region and product and confirm. I move the two slicers next to my pivot chart. Now, whenever I click a slicer button, the entire chart filters instantly. For example, if I select only West and almonds roasted 500 grams, the chart updates on the spot. To make sure both charts respond to the same slicer, I right-click the slicer, choose Report Connections, and tick every pivot table I want linked. And here's something important. You have to do this for each slicer separately. It doesn't work if multiple slicers are selected at once. This is also where giving your pivot charts and sheets clear. Matching names really pays off. In the Report Connections window, Excel now clearly shows which tables belong to revenue and which belong to units sold, making it easy to connect the right ones. Now, when I change a slicer, for example, switching from west to south, both charts react immediately filtering together and staying perfectly synchronized. That's all it takes for full, synchronized interactivity across both charts. Slicers are great for filtering. But what if you want to change a number directly? For example, test what happens if sales grow by 10% or drop by 5%. That's where form controls come in. Let's say I want to add a simple growth rate control to test different scenarios on the dashboard. On my revenue sheet, I'll move a bit to the right of my charts, for example, to column R and set up a small helper area. In R1, I'll type growth rate as a label. Just below, in R2, I'll reserve the actual number that the scroll bar will change. Now, I open the Developer tab, click Insert, choose Form Controls, select Scroll Bar, and draw it right next to that helper area. Then, I right-click the scroll bar, choose Format Control. The Format Control panel opens, and I go to Control. In the cell link box, I select R2. That's where the linked value will appear. Next, I set the minimum value to 50, the maximum value to 150, and the incremental change to 5. Those numbers represent percentages, from 50% to 150% of the original sales, stepping in 5% intervals. That means the dashboard can simulate sales being halved, 50%, or increased by half, 150%, with smooth steps in between. Now that R2 shows a number between 50 and 150, I'll convert it into a percentage by dividing by 100. So I go to R3 and I'll type, equal sign, R2, slash, 100. Press enter and format it to percentage. That makes it easy to read. The last step is to apply this growth rate to my total sales. My pivot table with total revenue is summarizing all sales. I can reference that total cell directly. For instance, if the grand total for revenue sits in B48, I can multiply it by my growth rate. So I go to R4 and I'll type equal sign B48 asterisk R3 and press enter. That formula gives me the adjusted total, what the overall sales would look like at that growth rate. Every time I move the scroll bar, R2 changes, the percentage updates, and so does the adjusted total. You can use the same logic for target achievements, budget adjustments, or forecast scenarios, all without a single line of code. Next, let's make sure the dashboard always shows fresh data. Here's a tiny bit of automation, just one short macro that refreshes everything with a single click. I go to the Developer tab and click Visual Basic. That opens the VBA Editor panel. In the left panel called Project, where it shows your workbook and its sheets, I right-click on this workbook, choose Insert, and then click Module. 
That creates a blank code window where I can paste the macro. Sub, refresh dashboard, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. This workbook dot refresh all, end sub. Refresh all updates all pivot tables, pivot charts, and any queries. So one click covers the entire dashboard. I click on save and close the VBA editor. Because this file contains VBA now, I saved it as Excel macro enabled workbook earlier. If macros are disabled on your computer, Excel will block them. So make sure macro security allows this file to run. Back in Excel, on the developer tab, I click insert. Choose form controls, select button, and draw it on the dashboard sheet. As soon as I release the mouse, Excel shows assign macro. I select refresh dashboard and click OK. To name the button clearly, I right click it and choose edit text, then type refresh. Now this button triggers the macro every time I click it. To demonstrate how it works, I'll simply copy the existing rows from my sales data table and paste them again right underneath. Excel tables expand automatically when you paste below the last row. That quickly simulates new data being added, for example, another month's results. After pasting, I click the refresh button and instantly both pivot tables and charts update with the new totals. It's a fast way to show how this refresh button does its magic. If you prefer not to use macros, you can go to data and click refresh all button instead. It does the same thing, just without the custom button. And that's it. We've just built a fully interactive and automated Excel dashboard from start to finish. We began with a simple sales table and turned it into two clear pivot charts, one showing total revenue, the other units sold. Then we added slicers so we can filter both charts instantly by region or product, keeping them perfectly synchronized. Next, we made the dashboard dynamic with a growth rate scroll bar that lets us test what-if scenarios in real time, like increasing or decreasing total sales without touching a single formula. And finally, we added a small refresh button powered by a simple macro that keeps everything up to date with one click. What we have now is a living dashboard, one that reacts to every selection, adjusts targets on demand, and refreshes itself whenever new data arrives. It's a perfect example of how Excel can go beyond static reports and become an interactive workspace for exploring and presenting data. If this video helped you understand how to make your dashboards come alive, give it a like, subscribe to Excel Hive for more practical Excel tutorials, and let me know in the comments what kind of dashboard you'd like to see next. And as always, happy Excelling!